has been specifically uh, about us, about ourselves. Somebody said, well, I don't know about ourselves, but people, uh, uh, but if, if you don't need um, special prayer from me or anyone else to be delivered. You got to decide, Lord, deliver me. And we put ourselves before God. And there, there's this new notion that you can go and be delivered. And then when I fall, I got to go be delivered. But deliverance comes when we surrender. Deliverance comes through surrenderance. So this has been for us that God will wash us, cleanse us um, as we're preparing for um, just this is our new year. We see as a church, January don't mean much to us. It does. Thank God. It's a new year on the Gregorian calendar. And so that's wonderful. But January don't mean much. So we don't do much in January. We have we pray as we do. But um, for some reason, um, for many reasons, uh, because after Passover is a new year on the Jewish calendar also, it's from Passover on. And we just follow our Passover calendar that from Passover to Pentecost is the beginning of our new year. It's the beginning of our new year. And that's why I didn't even feel bad about switching ministries when we did, because we're going into our new year, if you're with me. Prayerfully, everybody got a consecration guide. Mine is frayed. Yeah, mine has been through. I took mine through. I've been reading it like I never, like I didn't even write it. I guess I didn't. I'm not saying that was inspired, but the Lord gave it to me. Um, I want to, I, I mentioned yesterday that I'm going to take a hiatus from Leviticus and talk a bit about fasting. Um, we cannot make an assumption that everybody understands fasting. In the English language, or really in any language, you can say a word and it can mean 30 different things to 30 different people. So you can say fast. Somebody say, oh, I'm fasting from uh, gr uh, from Snickers bars. I'm on a Snickers bar fast. And they could be genuinely, you know, they could be genuine. I'm on a Snickers bar fast, and this person is doing intermittent fasting because they saw it on YouTube, and it's going to help them to lose weight. And this person is fasting from kissing their girlfriend, whatever people fast from. But we're going to talk about biblical fast just for a moment. If we are to be the people of God, and I got a little time. We didn't even do worship. <laughs> and uh, I got a little time that we can walk you through fasting, even if you're already um, an expert in fasting. And, and I'm going to refer to this packet. You don't have to have it with you, but I'll refer to it. And I want to encourage you. I think we're recording. We're recording because it's recording online. Am I correct? Am I correct, uh, Gersh? And I know y'all figuring things out. We're recording, right? Okay. So you can go over this later on. It's on YouTube. Yeah, it's on our YouTube page, so you can get it later on. But I encourage you to take notes. I had slides. My computer, I thought, was healed. And I was working, and it was going wonderful. And then it just said, <laughs> and I said, well, it's good, because sometimes you remember what you hear, what you write, what you think about. So I encourage you to take notes, whether you're writing on your tablet, your phone, or with the way I do it. I write the old school way with pen and paper. Now, the children were asking, are they going to have their children's ministry today? I'm the children's ministry teacher today. So I'm going to teach you young people, too, how to fast. Because uh, parents, your children can fast. All right? You should teach your children to fast. Now, they may not be able to fast two, three days without eating. They may call the people on you. But... They can, they can fast, amen. Um, in my house, um, pretty much nobody, nothing moves in the kitchen on Tuesdays and Fridays until a certain time. When there's younger children, about noon, the kitchen started moving. Then when everybody got a little older, it's at least three. And we got three from Cornelius, but yeah, three o'clock. Well, I didn't get it from Cornelius, I got it from the church. But <laughs> three o'clock, six o'clock. And then we started teaching older children, you can make it till six, you can eat tomorrow, and none of them died. I didn't lose a child. 
Yeah, and then some of them, I had children who were in trouble. So I remember specifically one of my children. I won't tell you the name because y'all will go make fun of them or say something because y'all have no discretion. So, um, so I won't tell you the name. You just have to guess. But I had children who were preparing to take the ACT. And I said, why isn't so-and-so eating? He hadn't eaten for two, three days. Instead of studying, he went on to fast because he wanted to get into a certain school. And I want an academic scholarship. And I'm just believing God, so I'm going to fast. And I almost said, wow, that's a lot. But they did it in high school, three days. Amen. And then broke it right. So I just want to talk about that. So as we teach them early, they can learn. I learned by watching my parents fast. Uh, they fast. I remember when my mother fasted 40 days. I talked to her about that the other day. I said, so did you get hungry? And she said she ate once she got hungry. And she got hungry right about day 40 after not eating for 40 days. She said, my hunger came back. Uh, we'll talk about that also because... Uh, and Sharon can help me, and other you in here can help me, Elder Walker can help me, all these elders right here, they're right on the front row, they can help me. There's a time when you're fasting, your hunger goes away. You ain't hungry no more. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yep, you ain't even hungry. And, you, and your strength comes back, right? Hunger goes away, strength comes back, you get through that, and then on the other side, hunger can come back. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. Let's just first look at... Bible fast, what the Bible says about fasting. The what, and then I want to talk about the why, and I got about uh, a paper full of scriptures for you, so I hope you get them. Let's first go to Matthew 6, obvious scripture, obvious scripture, and we're going to push. We're going to do Bible study today. We're going to study the Bible. Matthew 6, Matthew 6, starting at verse 15. Starting at verse 15. Now, the interesting thing in, in, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talks about the four foundations in this Matthew 6, uh, uh, the four foundations. And you see it, by the way, in your notes from the Franklin Hall notes. The four foundations of the Christian faith. That is, um, that is uh, giving. That is prayer. That is fasting. Giving prayer, fasting. I'm missing something. Give, help me out, y'all. Giving when you pray, when you, giving prayer, giving prayer, fasting, and I said when you pray, when you fast, when you give, and uh, huh, my feet. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, huh, faith. That's right. It's in the packet and faith. So those are four things. We've been teaching on faith. Uh, we've taught on giving uh, and give, uh, prayer and fasting. But fasting gets overlooked. We hear about all the other things. In Matthew 6, 15 to 17, thank you, Mother Irons. It says, in Matthew 6, 15, and I think I'm, am I at 6? 16, that's right. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites. Now, I want to stop before I get to how the hypocrites fast. Jesus assumes that Christians fast. He didn't say if you fast or, you know, if you're led to fast. There are many things. I keep hearing this. I'm led to, I don't know if I'm led to do this. I'm led to do that. There, there are many things you don't need to pray about. You don't need to pray about, you might need to pray about when, but you don't pray about fasting. You don't pray, the devil ain't going to put in your head to give more money. Bless somebody. No, that ain't the devil. Ah, that's the devil. I rebuked the devil, told me to give extra money in the offering. I wasn't led to do it. Uh, not going to do that. There are certain things you don't have to be led to do. You don't have to be led to love somebody. Are y'all with me? Yeah, you know, I just wasn't led to love on that person. You know, I, my discernment said don't love them. You know, they're dangerous. No, you don't need to be led to love somebody. We're commanded. There are certain things we're commanded. And here it says, moreover, when ye, in my King James here, when you fast. So Jesus assumes that all Christians fast. Baptist, Christians, Presbyterian, Church of God, Christ, don't matter what you are. If you're a Christian, you fast. It's not a, 
oh, that's something we do over here at Tabernacle. No, this is a basic Christian discipline. When you fast, Jesus didn't motivate, I hope you fast, I hope you decide to fast. When you fast, be not as the hypocrites. So he assumes you fast, but you won't fast like the hypocrites. How do the hypocrites fast? The hypocrites fast of a sad continence. They walk around, oh my God, I'm going through. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. You don't need to make no posts telling folks to fast. We ain't making no flyer passing it around telling them tabernacle on the fast. We ain't making nothing. Now, if you share this, this is for us. We're not making no fire with my picture on it smiling. We fast. That's stupid because it's hypocritical according to Jesus. When you fast on the physical face, verily I say to you, why? Because they have their reward already. It's the same thing with praying. We don't pray to be seen, to make known. We don't give to be seen. We could be seen giving. And now we're going to know, everybody in here, we're going to know you fasting. So don't ask somebody, are you sick? Are you okay? You look a little, somebody do that every year to somebody. Are you okay? Like, you know we fasting. So you know somebody going to be a little down from fasting. You, you know that. You don't need it. Are you, are you okay? How many days you been fasting? Do you think you need an IV? You think you need to go to the doctor? They all right. They going to live and not die. Man, I don't know. Let me not do that. Now, my cousin used to say, it feel heavy in there. I don't do that. But thou, <laughs> that's my cousin. I don't do that. But thou, when thou fast, no one knows it says again. Moreover, when you fast in verse 16, and then in verse 17, but you, when you fast. No, no question about it. Don't fast like the hypocrites, but when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, that you appear not unto men to fast, but unto the Father which is in secret. And that Father which is in secret shall reward you openly. So when you fast in secret, first of all, we see we fast in secret, but we also see that there's a reward to fasting. You see that in the text? It's not even implied. It's explicitly in the text. I didn't have to dig deep to peel that out. When you fast, do it in secret. Your father which seeth in secret shall reward you openly. Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon the earth where moth and rust doth corrupt. And where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. So we're laying up treasures in heaven. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven so that you can uh, wear moth and blood and where the thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now there's a whole diatribe there that when you fast you'll be rewarded you're laying up treasures in heaven you'll be rewarded also here on earth and nobody can steal your reward for fasting are you all with me now so we we see how to fast and we know why to fast the scripture i quote all the time matthew 17 i quote this where we all should know it by heart matthew 17 21 if you've, been, if you've been around me for two months, I know I've quoted it ten times. Maybe I haven't quoted that much, but I quote it. Now, if you got an NIV Bible, they deleted it. You got some of these other Bibles, these new finagle Bibles. You got a message, George Peterson or whatever his name. Peterson didn't want you to know this, but it's in the Bible. This ain't no secret scripture, but it's in the Bible. And the NIV, make sure they know you deleted it because they jumped from verse 20 to 22. Yeah, they, they even show you we deleted a verse. Yep. Don't worry, I got an NIV at home, but I don't read from it. I mean, I don't preach for us. I, I just look at it sometimes. Now, first of all, we need to know in context, Matthew 17 is about a boy who came to church. His father brought him to church. He had demons. He could not be healed. Let's, go, let's start at verse 17. 
Then Jesus, verse 17, Matthew 17, 17, then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Talking about the boy. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. He called them faithless generation. He rebuked the devil out of the boy. And he departed out of him. The child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could we not cast the demon out? Who should be able to cast the demon out? Who? Uh, I think the Bible says if you are elder or a bishop, you should be able to cast demons out. Amen. Anybody who believes. You don't need no specialist. That's TikTok. I'm a demon casting out specialist. No, you just need to be saved. Anybody saved, got anybody saved for one day has more power, has the power to cast out any demon. One day. These are the signs that follow those that believe. Now here are believers, disciples who saw Jesus' miracles who could not cast out a demon. And they said, why could we not cast them out? Do y'all see this in your Bible? Now what I need you to do, listen Listen, for those that didn't bring their Bible, if you come to this church, you still should carry your Bible. I put the scriptures up here for the people who don't have Bibles or don't bring them. Because when we put something in the Bible, you should mark it, circle it, underline it, highlight it, come back to it. It'll bless you. All right? All right. Okay. I don't say that enough. And Jesus rebuked the devil out of them. Now, why could we not cast them out? Verse 20, Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, this is why you couldn't cast them out. Now, we're preaching on faith. Am I right? Y'all with me? We're preaching on faith. Now, some people, faith is rising. Some people saying, I don't know what he's talking about because I still don't have no more faith than I had before. That's the pastor's fault. He ain't preached faith into me. It's not my job. I can't preach faith into you. I can encourage you to be in faith. But watch this. Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing, nothing, nothing shall be impossible unto you. So if you got a little bit of faith, mustard seed faith, you can speak to the mountain, the mountain will move. But look at verse 21. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. This kind, this kind of what? This kind of power. Y'all see that? Now, if you're looking at it on your tablet, your phone, highlight it, mark it, whatever you do on your tablet. I ain't dogging your tablet. I ain't dogging your phone. I'm just saying, make sure you got it in your paper Bible so that when they delete your apps and, you know, they arrest people in China for having Bibles on their phone. When they tra track you and say you got dangerous information, you still got a paper Bible that cannot be traced by the, the satellite. This kind of power, when he said, how be it, this kind does not come out. When he talks about the this kind, he's referring back to the power of casting out demons. This kind of level of belief to have this kind of faith to cast out demons does not come out except but through prayer. That's what we're doing. And fasting. The problem is that the enemy has crept into the church. It's the American church, by the way. As I travel around the world, it's normal for people to fast. In America, it's normal for us to eat. Fellowship is to eat. You holy if you're eating. We even call a chicken a holy bird. A gospel bird. And ain't nothing wrong with chicken. I ain't saying that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we celebrate around food because of our abundance. We got abundance, and that abundance has become an albatross around our neck. But we have deleted the number one power source, fasting and praying. If you don't fast, you're in trouble. You won't last. If you don't pray, you won't stay. I can't say that enough. This kind of power. Supernatural power, the power of faith, the force of faith, the power of God only comes through prayer and fasting. Don't matter how much you know your Bible. Now, there are people who who fast for all kinds of reasons because there's you got in your uh, we put it in your packet. There are health benefits to fasting. If you fast, you're just going to be healthier. 
intermittent fasting, it'll align your body, do all kinds of things. There are people that fast for all kinds of reasons. There are people who fast uh, just to be good people. There are people who fast to other gods. Because the truth is, the reason why we've been praying and repenting all this week, because whatever is in you is going to get stronger when you fast. Hope y'all hear what I'm saying. So if you evil and you fast, you're just going to come out to fast more evil. <laughs> Because if you got an evil spirit and your spirit gets stronger because your flesh has gotten weaker, then you're going to get evil. This is why we said, Lord, clean us. Make us more like you so that you rise in us. You go in a fast and you just, you know, you got a bad attitude. You still hate. Well, that hate has not been rooted out by God. It hasn't been surrendered by you. I got to say, Lord, forgive me. Wash me. Remove this as I fast. Now, somebody say, that's why I ain't going to fast. I guess I'll be up for this next year. No, you up to saying, confessing. Notice, remember Monday, we were confessing. Tuesday, we were seeking God, asking God to wash us. Wash my heart. And as we confess sin, having unconfessed sin in our lives land us up in hell. So if you ain't ready to fast, you ain't ready to go to heaven. Whew. All right. Okay. Now, food is a problem. Let me just talk about that just for a moment, then we're going to come back around. Pardon? Okay. Food is a problem. Food is a problem from Vincent Matthews, me, Mina, me, me and food. And I try to eat healthy, but then I can eat a whole lot of healthy stuff. You know, just just because it's good for you don't mean you need to eat a pile of it. <laughs> like it's just granola bars. I can have seven of them while I watch the game. <laughs> what in the world are you doing, dude? It's healthy. First of all, granola bar really ain't as healthy as they say it is. They lying. <laughs> granola bar ain't healthy. Nope. If it was, you make your own and mash it together. You don't know what's mashed up. To it. Okay. In that brick. That you got to suck on to make it soft. Look at Luke. I'm talking to me, y'all. I ain't talking to you yet. Luke. Or take the kids to Bojangles. They eating chicken. I don't eat chicken, but give me three of them biscuits. <laughs> I don't eat chicken, but I take three of them Bojangle biscuits in the name of the Lord. And y'all brush that grease on top of it with the paintbrush. <laughs> That ain't butter, that's grease. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's good. And, and, and give, me a, give me a Arnold Palmer with that. <laughs> so with my sugar high. <laughs> food is a problem. Is food bad? No. Food is not bad. God shows us his love through the food that he gives us. Look at Luke. I'm sorry, did I tell you Luke 21? Luke 21, 34. I'm telling you, I can beat any computer Bible at any time with my paper Bible. Ah! Woo! Anytime. I whoop you. I'm like, I told you, I'm like John Henry. I'll come up here and do a Bible drill with you. With your phone and my paper Bible. I think I'm going to beat you. Ah! Luke 21, 34. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. What does your Bible say? Is this King James surfeiting? Carousing. Yours says surfeiting. Surfeiting. Anybody got any other word? Surfeiting. I'll tell you what that means. Surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life and so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So verse 34, take heed yourselves lest at any time your hearts, your heart be overcharged with surfeiting, which can be used for overindulgence. And in this context, it's talking about overeating. Eating too much. You know, they got us on, uh, uh, they get us on um, comfort food. So food brings me comfort. 
Ah, comfort food. And I will tell you, my wife, if my wife make some of the things that she can make, I'm not going to mention all the stuff she make. The woman can cook. My, she can burn, man. The woman can burn. Did I tell you about the time we first met? This is, we had known each other a few months. And uh, I was sick. Did I tell you about that? I was sick as a dog. And she came around and said, oh, I'm just so sick. I'm just so sick. This is in 1989. I'm just so sick. And she said, she was, just, she was straight from Crowder, Mississippi, Detroit. And she said, hold on, I'm going to cook you something. She made me some smothered steak and gravy with some mashed potatoes. I promise you, I took three bites of that smothered steak and gravy and mashed potatoes. I got better. I I, this is not an exaggeration. She said, just eat this. I was like, I'm not hungry. Just eat this. I started eating. I said, what kind of, wow. <laughs> well, who are you? <laughs> I thought every woman in Mississippi was like that. Yeah, I found out. She's one in a million. <laughs> Make sure you're not overcharged with overeating and drunkenness. Notice that sitting right next to each other. Seeing is the same way. And Lord, help me from gluttony. There's no end of scriptures on gluttony. Well, it is an end, but there are many scriptures that are on gluttony. Look at Romans 16. Let's go to Romans 16, 17. Are y'all with me? John Acts, Romans. Romans. Oh, he there. Oh, his tablet Bible beat me. Romans 16, 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offense contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Oh, by the way, that there are some people you need to avoid. That's a whole nother message, but I'm a, I think that fits in here somewhere as you in consecration. Now I beseech you, brethren, brethren mean you in the faith, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. Mark them folks that cause confusion in the church. Mark them folks that's talking different stuff. And it didn't say keep arguing with them. It didn't say keep trying to convince them and avoid them. Can I tell y'all a secret? It's just us. There's some preachers I avoid. I don't stand and talk too long because I'm like, yep, I don't even want it to be thought that you and I are on the same page. God bless you. I'm gone. God bless you. See you later. And, 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 and Yeah, I'm just stick there. There's some people I avoid because it's always drama. You know, there's some people just always drama around them. That's contrary to the doctrine that we taught. Avoid, avoid them. Ooh, that's just judging. Yes. Judge them and move. Y'all going by Miley Cyrus told y'all not to judge. The Bible says we should judge one another. That was Miley Cyrus that said don't judge. And everybody picked it up. She didn't properly exegete the scripture. Hannah Montana. That's her name. Hannah Montana said that. <laughs> Who said that? I don't know. For they that are such. <laughs> We're going to stick with Hannah Montana right now. For they that are such serve not. We're talking about those people to avoid. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own. What is it saying in your Bible? Their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Their gods are their belly. It says that in Philippians 3 too. Those whose gods are their belly. What does that mean? Because when I, when I don't have control even what I eat, I, I am led by my desires. My God is my belly. Whatever makes me feel good. Whatever makes me, I have no discipline. My God is my belly. You know, I'm just going to talk about me. This, this is past me now. This is past me. This is not current me. You buy a pack of cookies and you get three. And then you eat a few more. And next you know the whole pack gone. Your God is your belly on that one. And then next thing you know, I think within an hour, you say, I only ate three at a time. But they all gone. And you know them cheap cookies in the, in the, in the, in the gas station? The cheap ones. 
the, the sandwich, you get the lemon, you get the banana, you get the strawberry. Y'all know the ones I'm talking about, they hard on our side. So it's something about them. That if your God is your belly, you think a pack of those is one serving. <laughs> and you just set them in a car and drive and pop them. Lord, free me. And we don't even know what that cream inside. Don't have no banana, no strawberry, no nothing in there. They even taste good stale. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. They soft. You're like, oh, that's, that, that ain't bad. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Yeah, God had to deliver me from them cookies. <laughs> yeah, he had to deliver me. I'm, I ain't lying. I'm talking about me. I ain't even got to y'all yet. I'm talking about me right now. Deliver me from these cookies. Hallelujah. Those whose gods are their bellies. I just eat because I feel like it. My stomach talks. When you fast, you will find that your belly talks. Right, what you doing? Hey, what's going on? Huh? What's, what you doing? When we eat, we's going to die. Your belly talks. We eat. We eat a snack between what we eat. We eat a snack before we eat. We eat. First of all, nobody said you're supposed to have three meals a day. You feed the dog once. <laughs> we eat four, five times a day. Even the, now, okay, so food is an issue. So God, give me power over food because there's so much abundance. You can go in the in any restaurant, they keep refilling your drink. You drink, they refill. You drink, they refill. And man, when we moved back here from South Africa, we are like, only in America, just unlimited. Like, man, one of my children said, do, do we have to pay extra for this? Like, no, keep it coming. <laughs> and just now I'm, I'm taking more than my body needs. I've eaten enough for five people. Have you ever looked on a package and see what a serving is? And then you say, oh, no. I, one cup of cornflakes is a serving. One, about a handful is a serving. You had bowls and bowls. You, you, know, you eat down to the milk, then you pour on top of the milk. Then you eat down to the milk. Then you pour on top of the milk. Till the, you got to keep eating till the milk is gone. <laughs> I'm not talking about y'all yet. I'm talking about me. I'm not messing with y'all. I'm staying out of your business. I'm talking about my business. And you pour on top and then you mix it a little more. And then, oh, I still got milk, which means I still should be eating cereal until this milk is gone. I'm going to waste the milk. <laughs> it ain't no better if you got almond milk. Quit trying to justify yourself. Well, I use almond milk. You still greedy? <laughs> that was my rationalization. Oh, at least it's almond milk. We want to see what happened, what fasting does in Jonah chapter 3. We got to move now. Uh, Jonah chapter 3. Oh, boy, I got off. I'm way down in the Psalms. Joel, Amos. know my nightmare. Yeah, y'all beat me. Mike and Mayhem, Zephaniah, Zechariah. What's going on? Oh, Lord, this is a new Bible. I'm, oh, God, I'm sweating. Woo! Where did I say we was going again? Jonah. Jonah 3, 5. My God, this is embarrassing. Uh -huh. Jonah 3, 5, read. <laughs> so the people of Nineveh believed God. Well, now, let's look at this in context. The uh, 
God sent Jonah to Nineveh, which is the capital of Assyria. These were some mean, evil, wicked people. They would take over a place, a city, and chop off all the men's heads and leave them at a pile at the gate. Take all the women. Uh, the woman is married. They kill them. And all of the women who are not married, who are virgins, they would make them their wives, their love slaves, their, their slaves, and have babies, and they become uh, soldiers. Now look at verse 5. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed. So God used Jonah to warn them that they needed to repent. This was his enemies. They believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the, wait, that means from the, from the king on down to the servants, from the old down to the young. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast, put on sackcloth from the greatest to the youngest, I mean greatest of them to the least of them. For a word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Sackcloth is what we may be called, cotton sack. And he sat in ashes. He just sat in the ruins where the sacrifices were. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yeah, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their works, verse 10. God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God repented, which means God turned. God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them and he did it not. Through fasting and praying, an evil king turns to God, he repents, and he puts everybody, the entire kingdom goes on the fast, even the animals. Now, I ain't telling you put your dog on the fast, but he won't die either. You just whimper. Put everybody on the fast, and it turned the desolation against that area. Now, something we're going to do probably on Friday, Friday night, we're going to engage in spiritual mapping what is going on in our region? What are the strongholds in our region? What will we for now on pray against? We even have some spiritual mapping and a prayer guide in, the, in our book. If that's the case, I believe God can turn some things around in this area because the saints are fasting. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of hearing about folks getting shot and killed and stupid stuff. Turn that evil. Because the people got serious. The problem is that we're doing a lot of talking and not fasting. Doing a lot of feasting and not fasting. A lot of preaching and not fasting. The people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. Humble themselves. How do you humble yourselves? Fasting humbles you. But, it's, but the king, they didn't say all the bad people let's fast, all the good people let's fast. Everybody fast for this nation and God turned around from uh, destruction for national sin. Matter of fact, Jonah went to wait for the destruction that he prophesied and was mad. Like, what happened? Because the people believed God more than Jonah did. Now, just FYI, a few hundred years later, Nineveh got what was coming to them, but it wasn't then. They turned it around. All right. Some people who fasted in the Bible... Moses fasted, Elijah fasted, Esther fasted, Daniel fasted, Anna the prophetess fasted, Jesus fasted, Paul fasted, David fasted, and many, many others. Peter fasted. We're going to see Peter fasting in a moment. If Jesus fasted before he launched into his, into his public ministry, how much more? If Jesus had to fast, how much more should we be fasting? Let's look at Acts chapter 10. 
I'm coming for y'all now. And that, that Jonah was a problem. Acts chapter 10, let's look at Peter fasting. Okay. I can beat most of y'all. I can't beat Patrick Walker, though. Him and that iPad is on point. Acts chapter 10, verse 9. As uh, on the morrow, on the next day, I won't even go into context right now. As they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. So he had not been eating. He was very hungry. And then he fell into a trance. And then God gave him revelation on the Gentiles being saved. I'm not even going to go into that. That's when he saw the unclean meat coming down, all of that. My point is that when you fast, God will give you visions, insight. He will give you revelation. Some of you having dreams now that you might say, I'm having some crazy dreams since I've been on consecration. That's because you've not been watching crazy movies. God is activating what's in you, and now what you need to do is write it down. I had a dream last night. I still got to share it with my wife because it won't leave me. It was a disgusting dream. What I saw, I believe, is a warning for the church. Very disgusting dream. Very real. Very startling. I believe it's a warning for me and for the church. Now, what happens when we fasten? Let's go to my, one of my favorite passages. You've been around me a long time. You know I go here. Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58, about 1 through 10, talks about what kind of fast God calls. Are you all with me? Now, I'm going into the why, the what, and then I'm going to talk about the how in a few moments. We're almost there. Isaiah 58, starting at verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness. Forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in the approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they? And thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? That thou takest no knowledge, behold, in the day of your fast, you find, oh, wait a minute, let me, let me stop there for a minute. So God is saying, yet they, 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 these people cry aloud, spare not, preach it, lift up your voice like a trumpet, show my people what they're doing wrong in the house of Jacob their sins. They are seeking me every day. They're seeking God every day, but they're seeking him wrong. Do you see this? You're seeking me every day, but you're seeking me wrong. As a nation, see this? You're seeking me every day, but you're seeking me wrong. As a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God, you acting like y'all doing right, but you're not. And they ask me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God, and they're asking me, Lord, why we fast and you, not, you don't even see us? We fast and you ain't doing nothing. I fast and ain't nothing happened. You ain't doing nothing, God. I fasted, nothing happened. Wherefore, we have afflicted our souls because to fast is to afflict my soul and my body. You ain't necessarily going to be happy when you fasted. You ain't just going to see, oh, hear angels when you fast. And you got to go through. Some of you going to be hangry for two, three days. I mean straight hangry. Just saying, I don't know. And say, Lord. That, that's my flesh talking. Let it die. Have we afflicted our soul? And you don't, you don't take knowledge? You're not paying attention, Lord? Behold. And then look at it. Say, Behold. Now, that's after the question mark. Now it switched back to God. God then says, Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. So you may not be eating but you're just on a hunger strike. Because fasting is more than just not eating. 
You're not eating, you watching movies, you're not eating, you, you, you listening to secular music. Well, you shouldn't even be doing that when, when you're not fasting. But let alone when you're fasting. I went in the store today, I went in the store today, and there was somebody on the radio just bothering me. I said, oh, what, what is this playing? And lady said, oh, that's, and I was like, she sound crazy. Is she okay? And one was, hey, hey. I'm like, what? And they had it pumping like it was a jam. But it vexed my spirit. I ain't going to say who it is. Then you'll say, she bad. No, it's all bad if it's not glorifying God. So to just not eat, I ain't eating 10 days. The heathens do that. You get some monk up in a mountain in the Himalayas, didn't eat for 20, 30 days. Some people don't eat 40, 50 days. But they're not fasting God's biblical fast. You fasting, you watching TV, watching the news, everything online, on your timeline, talking to everybody, same text, same joke, same everything. No time for God. You, oh, I don't see you. I don't hear you. Well, that's deep, ain't it? I went through the whole 50-day consecration. I ain't feel nothing. Your fault. Then look what he says. Uh, Behold, in a day you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, you fast for strife and debate. And to smite with the fists of wickedness. You shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. You fasting, trying to show people something, trying to prove a point, trying to do whatever else. You shall not do this to this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Is this, is it, look at verse 5, we're in Isaiah 58, verse 5. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? Is this the fast that God has chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him like they did in Nineveh? Would I call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? So I, 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 the fast that God has chosen is to bow down my head as a bulrush, to bow down like a bush is under the wind. And to lay before God under him and to call this the acceptable day of God. Verse 6 then says, is this not the fast that I've chosen? Is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness? Did I skip you up? I'm in the right place. Loose the band of wickedness. So I should be seeking God. This is why we were seeking God this week. Loose the wickedness from me. To undo the heavy burdens, not just upon myself, upon my family, upon my church family, upon this community. To break the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free. Father, bless those who are bound. That you break every yoke. This is what we're fasting for. We ain't fasting just, Lord, I need money. No, that we, and fasting does not bribe God to hook us up. Lord, I fasted. Now, where my rays at? No, 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 no. I'm fasting. Lord, let your will be done. Let you shine through me. Let you take control. Let you be the Lord of my life, the boss of my life. Is this the fast that he has called? Is it not to, is it not to, uh, let me see here, accept the blade of Lord. Is it not the fast that I have chosen you to loose the bands of wickedness? Verse 7. Is it not to deal your bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to your house? <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to elaborate on that because y'all don't even want the saints at your house. Yeah, I'll be looking at me like, yeah, that's how I was raised. Don't nobody come to your house. They're going to come get you. No. Bring the poor to your house. When you see is the naked that you cover him and that you hide not thyself from thy own flesh. That's your family, your own flesh. Your distant family. I'm talking about that family you really don't want everybody to know you're related to. You know. You know. Everybody got some crazy in their line. Right? You going to hide yourself from your own flesh? You know, we don't have nothing to do with them? In other words, when we... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, we come to eight in a minute. These things happen when we fast. 
ministry activates in you. you. When you are faster, when you're seeking God, you're in consecration, we become more than just mere churchgoers. We're not just, well, I'm going to church, do God a favor. Yep, here I am, Lord, get my praise on. Hallelujah, I'm out. We become active in ministry, and you don't need nobody to tell you. You don't have to come to the Thursday food giveaway. You're giving away stuff from your own pantry, blessing somebody. Hello, somebody. I saw a dress. I saw dresses, Sharon, I didn't even tell you, in Family Dollar Day for $8, little girls' Easter dresses. I almost bought 10 of them. They had little tutu. You know y'all like them tutus, grown and young. Y'all wear them tutus now. And grown folks with tutus. Y'all got tutus and the sneakers. I, I saw the tutu in the top. It was $8 in family dollar. I'm just give them all to me. I'm just going to give them to the kids. I said, take them, girl, get, try them tutu on. They didn't have much boy stuff. They had some sweats. Uh, hmm? JJ said something. I'll get you something, Jay. So if we're fasting, if it's a fast that God has chosen, we will seek to loose the bands of wickedness, undo the heavy burdens, break oppression, mental, physical, emotional oppression, break every yoke, share food, help the poor, and, and take people in our house, Help those that don't have clothes. Do y'all see that? That's listed in the book, but I'm reading it straight out the text. And take care of our extended family. There shouldn't be, if, 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 if the saints were fasting in Shelby County and DeSoto County, there'd be no children in foster care right now. Because the saints would take them in. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Then, watch this, then, you see this in verse 8? Then thy, I'm going to say your, then your light break forth as the morning, and your health shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear reward. We'll have your back. Then when these things happen, when these things come out of fasting, whoa, reason why the church is so weak it's because folks ain't fasting. Our breath smell like food. How you doing? Sirloin. How you doing? Chicken. How you doing? Cookies. That's why the church so weak. That's why you so weak. That's why you so up and down. I was high today in church. I was down tomorrow because there's no strengthening coming because then when you're doing those things, you're compelled to serve God. Don't nobody have to teach you what ministry is. You don't need a class. No, when you fast, you don't need no class. God started giving you revelation. You don't need no, that's why, that's why I keep saying, uh -uh, okay, nobody in this church that ain't been taught enough because we teach, 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 teach. You need some revelation, revelation, revelation. And when you got a revelation, can't nobody convince you to turn around. Whoa, I know that. I know that. I'm seeing, I, you can't up me on dysfunction in church. I've seen all the dysfunction. I, I can match you. For every one you got, I got two. Okay, maybe I got one and a half. And I don't want to just be in competition. But I can dysfunction you all day. I've seen dysfunction in church all day. But, uh, but, I, but I, I didn't, I, but, but then I knew God gave me discernment through fasting and praying. Can I tell you a testimony real quick? And I'm going to get back to my text. So, hmm, I got saved. And um, then I got in ministry and I was serving. I had never been to the uh, convocation uh, here in Memphis uh, since I was saying, uh, had we come? Is that when we came and we, I wore jeans on official day? I don't know. But anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, I came to the convocation, did the whole jean hookup, you yeah. Y'all didn't do me nice. Y'all didn't treat me nice. But anyway, <laughs> um, so my father was a pastor. They came to the convocation, so I was over the church while he was gone. You over the church. Whoa, I got it. And he um, said, we got a guest speaker on Sunday night. There's a man called Brother Young was going to speak. And um, 
Brother Young came to the church, and uh, I didn't know how to take him. He was from Ghana. I had never heard of him in my life. My father met him somewhere and said, he's going to preach Sunday night. Yeah, it was cool. And that man got up and went up and down us and told us how, how lazy we are, how we don't fast, and how y'all just eating and y'all just this. And everybody in the church was mad but Sharon and I. I was just convicted. Like, wow, how can that man coming from Ghana come telling us? And I was just like, wow. Because by then, uh, y'all need to understand, I, I came out of college. I was broke for a minute. Then I started making buku money, and I wanted to prove to my wife and my family that I was somebody. So we bought cows. Half a cow at a time got it cut up. I had freezer, a freezer with nothing but steaks because I buy a cow, half a cow at a time. Well, guess what happens when you got that much meat in your house? You grow. I had a neck on the back of my neck. Now, man, I, I outgrew everything I had. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I grew. I grew big and fast because I was eating good. Man, I had to be, I told him I bought the half a cow. Me and the brother in the church, I said, man, we just, let's do this. We go down, get, pick the cow, you know, they have it hanging up, you know, the, the, in the butcher. Cut that cow in half and cut it up and I watched them, make sure they didn't take nothing. I watched them the whole time. But you doing that fat? Put that in there too. <laughs> Brought it all home wrapped in butcher paper. If you're from Detroit, I got it at Eastern Market. Down the Eastern Market. Got this stuff. Woo, we was good, me and Sharon. I'm living good. And this man come tell me I'm eating too much. Y'all eat too much. You digging your grave with your mouth. Y'all dead spiritually. Ain't no miracles in here because y'all eat too much. This is a guest speaker. Ate us alive. The people, <laughs> folks, was hot. And I was just convicted. Like, oh my goodness. And the Lord shook me. The Lord shook me at that point. Because he's like, what is wrong with you? You just eating, 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 eating. When's the last time you fasted? First of all, you eating like this, you're going to die fast. You ain't supposed to eat every day. Your body needs to rest. Whew. That's why you ain't supposed to eat. After a certain time at night until the morning, because your body's made the rest. You waking up eating lasagna at midnight. <laughs> your body working when it should be resting. And it's trying to churn when it should be sleep. That's why they call it breakfast. You break your fast in the morning. So, so we started radical fasting, and it started us having all night prayer. I don't know if you remember this, Davida. Every Friday night, every Friday night for almost a year, we had all night prayer. And it started off big. It was like this. It was like a couple hundred of us there. Ah! Week two, it cut in half. Week three, it cut down. Week four, crickets. <laughs> but we was there with, 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 you ain't got no large family. I mean, they was all straight down. Carrying babies, coming in, and we just in all night prayer. And God, I was the first time I saw actual angels. Angels. I saw angels in the balcony. I saw angels around, and they were with us. We were praising God, and we would just praise God. We didn't care to keep work, praying. didn't come, whoever, have all night prayer every Friday night. And I was working 12 to 15 hours a day, and I came to prayer on that night. And I was working six, seven days, six, seven days a week. And my pastor said, you're doing too much. My father was like, you're doing too much. And I was like, I ain't doing enough. I got to see God. And God began to give us revelation, 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 understanding, revelation. And then it became weird to eat. I want to get back there. That Vincent. It became weird to eat. Like, wait a minute. Am I eating today? This is weird. I got food. Oh, that's how that feels. Because I was used to just like, God, kill this flesh and rise me up. God began giving me revelation. God began giving me understanding. We would be in prayer and just see things and understand things in the spiritual realm. There was nobody to go on the internet to ask anything from. God was showing us. What am I telling you? God will give you revelation when you fast. He will give you insight as you fast. It, it, beyond your intellect. Mind you, I'm working close to 12 to 15 hours 
a day. My church was an hour and a half to two hours drive away. And I had, we had, how many children under 10? A lot. <laughs> One time I had to count just to make sure we got everybody. We got everybody, everybody in the car. Snowstorms, rainstorm. Then, then the drive home is two and a half, three, four hours ride home, but it was worth it. Sleep Saturday, be at church on Sunday, never grievous. It was worth it because God washed himself and nobody had to tell me. All I had to hear is a message that convicted me. You eat too much. God is it. God can't get in the way with all of that. You're drunk with food. I ain't telling you that. I'm just saying praise the Lord. But then when you're on a God fast, your light shall break forth. People say, where are you getting this stuff from? Where are you getting here? What's going on? Mind you. We was in our 20s, wasn't we, Sharon? Sharon. I was in my 20s, right? Huh? No, I wasn't 20. Yeah, 25, 26, 27. And then when nobody was coming, no more, it was about four of us coming to the night prayers. I said, it's okay, I got the key to the church. Are we good? I was 26, 27. Who cares how old I was? Well, I just didn't wait till I'm grown. First of all, I knew I was grown. I didn't, know, but I, I didn't want to be in no kitty church. I didn't want to be in the, I'm part of the church. And I want to see God for myself face to face. And when you want to see God self face to face, he taught me how to be a husband. He taught me how to be a father. He taught me. He gave me how to organize business deals. I walk in rooms and the Lord will just tell me, here's what you're going to do. Here's what you're going to wear. Here's what you're going to say. And I'm getting contracts like crazy. Got a little money hungry on that one. <laughs> but what am I trying to tell you? Then your light will spring forth. We sitting here waiting on God. That's a good thing. That's biblical if we wait right. But we just like, Lord, when you going? Lord, when you going to do? Lord, when you going to do? And he's saying, when you going to seek me the way I expect you to seek me? The enemy has made the church like you going to a restaurant. Mm, let me see how the customer service is. Mm, let me see how they do. Let me see how they treat. Uh, let me see. Yeah, yeah. Somebody need to fix this. Somebody need to do this. God is looking for some folks to say, Lord, use me. Woo! Mm, 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 mm. Sometimes I stay from all night prayer, stay over, and do door to door evangelism, and then go home. Now, I ain't telling you to do what I did because I think I was doing a little bit, but that's what I needed to do. Because I did more than that when I was serving the devil. So I had this complex. For me, when people said, you're doing too much, I was like, y'all soft church folks. Because I used to hang all night and then go to work in the morning when I served the devil. That's what I used to do. Now, maybe you didn't do that. So I figured if I can do that for Satan, stepping all night, who oh, 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 oh. Man, if I can do that for the devil, how much more can I praise him all night? And then work in the next day. Well, how much more? Woo! And then they say, he'll cool down. I hope I'm, 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 I'm heating up right now. Hallelujah. Right? Well, nothing I can do. Man, I, 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 I come see you. How you doing, Susie? And then I leave Susie and go see this one and then go do my homework and then go do this and go to work. If I can run around doing that, how much more can I run around and serve God? <sighs> then, y'all all right? I'm trying to teach, but I don't know what I'm doing. Then, I don't know what you call what I'm doing, but I'm trying to proclaim. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning and your health shall spring forth speedily. I lost, that, I lost that neck on the back of my neck. It went away. I lost that. Lost that. I couldn't fit none of my shirts. My, my neck was wide. <laughs> I busted in my pants. But it didn't matter because I was buying new clothes. It didn't matter. But I can't wear these no more. I need all new clothes. But now... I'm getting back to where God want me to be. My health is right, and his righteousness shall go before you. Then I found myself in trouble. In a lot of places, I was doing stuff, and there was traps set, but God went before me. And the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard, your rear reward. Then 
then shall you call. Then shall you call. Remember before they said God didn't take knowledge. God didn't pay attention. Then shall you call and the Lord will answer. This is all related to fasting. I'm not, I'm not making nothing up. It's right here. Then shall you call. And whoa! I don't know if I should eat the rest of the year. Then shall you call and the Lord shall answer. Here I am. If you take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity. You see that? Then shall you call and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry and he shall say, here I am. If, if, if you take away from the midst of you the yoke. You take away the yoke. He destroys it. The putting forth of the finger, blaming everybody else. And speaking vanity, talking silly. If you put that away, you call God, he going to answer. And if you draw out your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then, do y'all see this? Then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. Your worst day will be like high noon. Do y'all see that there? Woo, there's some promises there. Yo, your worst day going to be like high noon. Your darkness is as a high day. My, bad, my worst day in God is better than a great day for a sinner. We sitting here, we done, we done caught on to the thing. It's just uh, 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 life, it, life be lifing. No, life, if life is lifing, if life is lifing, Zoe is Zoe, then you should be going from glory to glory. Life, let life life. The abundant life that God is giving. Life is life. And, oh, life is life. Quit rocking. Life is life and all right. I'm going from glory to glory. God is blessing. Yeah, well, you know, you know, these days, uh, we all down. Nope, I ain't down. Nope, sorry. That won't be my testimony. God, the glory of God shall be surrounded around me. And, look at verse 11, it's still more. And the Lord shall guide thee, continue, not just every once in a while. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought. When you're in dry places, the Lord will satisfy. He's going to guide you. He's going to satisfy your soul. Do y'all see this? Woo! Y'all see this online? Satisfy your soul and drought and make fat your bones. I was already fat. But make fat your bones. Did you know that some people that, want, that need to gain weight, gain weight when they fast? That don't even make sense, do it? We had a, we was in the men's group and we were talking about losing weight because we on the other side of the mountain. But some people on this side of the mountain were saying, well, what about us that's trying to gain weight? You know, there are people amongst us right here trying to gain weight. Amen. I'm willing to share a few pounds with you. How are you can? I'll give it to you. <laughs> I'll give you 20 pounds. It's two pounds. Yeah. But there, but there are some who lose weight in fasting. There are people who gain weight fasting. God will regulate you to where you're supposed to be. Why y'all looking at me like that? Y'all heard all this. I'm just telling you what you already know. Woo! Then shall thy light rise in obscurity, thy darkness be, oh, no, 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 thy fat on thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden. you just blooming and fruitful, beautiful, and like the, a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Oh, God. Woo! God's going to use us in wrestling. Do you all see this? Maybe I should just read it and just keep going because I, I, I got I to end at some point. And I got 15 more scriptures. He shall build of old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Thou shalt be called the you. Your new name will be called the repairer of the breach. The restorer of paths to dwell in. Help us, Lord. How many of us in here? It's about 100 of us easy. How, just imagine if we were all called the repairers of the breach. 
We fix things. We put them together. We ain't just sitting around talking. They're they, they, they not doing nothing. Why should I do something? <laughs> I'm the only one faithful. You're supposed to be. Who cares if they ain't doing nothing? It's just not fair. You ain't been through nothing, man. Suck it up. Suck it up. That means it's all for you. I remember one time, one time I come from a small church. Come from a small church. But the law been good to me. <laughs> I taught Sunday school, MC, led worship, took the offering, count the offering. And sometimes usher somehow in between all that. And it was because of other folks' unfaithfulness. Because bro, Bobo didn't show up. And I, you know, elder so-and-so didn't show up as you on MC. Sometimes it's just at the last minute. I'm talking about sitting in the pulpit. We used to sit up like we'd have a bunch of chairs with high backs that look royal. They're not comfortable as they look. You know, he <laughs> said they look comfortable. They're not as comfortable as they look. And next thing I know, after this song, oh, so-and-so is supposed to preach. After this song, you up preaching. After this song, after this song. You up preaching. Okay. Sing on. Oh, they get the Holy Ghost. Flip, flip, flip. Flip, flip, flip. And the Lord give you revelation. Oh, I hope y'all hear what I'm saying. I ain't get up. Well, saints, you got to always be ready up in here, don't you? <laughs> get up hot. And the Lord will bless you. Because he will, our name shall be the fixers. Wow! We're going to fix it. We're going to repair the breach where it's broken. We ain't just going to sit. Look at there. There's a breach. It's a shame they left the breach. Where's Brother Two Foot? He was supposed to be there on the breach. And see, that's why I'm so discouraged because Two Foot is always letting us down. No, oh, thank you, Lord. You showed it to me. Two Foot ain't there. I'm going to repair this. I'm going to fix this. Ain't nobody going to fly, fly, fly through this. Uh-uh, not as long as, not on my watch. And great is your reward. They shall be called the prayer to reach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. If you turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, you take some time and lay before God. The holy of the Lord, honorable and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure. Are y'all with me? Nor speaking your own words. Whew. Then, there's another then. Then shall you delight yourself in the Lord. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. I'm going to cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth. Y'all want to know how to be blessed? This is where we're there now. Watch the glory going to fall, the glory going to fall, the glory going to fall. Because the saints are fasting. But that should be our lifestyle all the time. Consecration is different than fasting. Consecration, we're set aside. We're sanctifying. Walk in sanctified. All right? And feed thee with, uh, I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, thy father. Galatians 3 says the blessings of Abraham are upon you for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. If you receive it, shout amen. amen. That's the word of the Lord. Now, let's move. Let's move. I have, I'm giving myself 15 minutes. Uh, let's look at Psalms 35, 13 real quick. Just see one more part on a perspective on fasting. Psalms, that's just back to the left. Psalm 35, 15. Ah, this new Bible, man. That's, that's the problem. I need my other Bible. That's why he beat me over here. Yep, I got to break this Bible in. Psalms 35, 15. Uh, excuse me. Let me see. Did I say 15? Uh, 13. Yep, 13. Because I got it underlined here. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul 
with fasting. And my prayer returned into my own bosom. Now, this talking about his enemies, how he prayed for them, he fasted them. But what I want to show you is that when we fast, we humble our soul. We humble our emotions, who we are. Who we are takes down and God takes up. All right. Are you all with me? All right. Uh, uh, mm, uh, fasting. Three more scriptures. Two more scriptures. Three more scriptures. Fasting also puts our body under subjection. First Corinthians 9, 27. And then I'm going to talk about fasting for the last five minutes. First Corinthians 9, 27. First Corinthians 9, 27. But I keep my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. I got to subject my body lest I preach to you and I go to hell. Man, wouldn't that be something? I always say it from this perspective. Uh, I always say, when I get to heaven, I got an answer for you. What if you get to heaven and you say, where my pastor at? And the Lord said, oh, no, he didn't make it. You made it. But I, I, had the, I had the PowerPoint slides. I had the PDFs. That's what got me into the word. Yep, he gave you good word. It was my word, but he didn't make it. Or where's elder so-and-so? Where's missionary so-and-so? Where's bishop so-and-so? No, nah, he ain't make it. Where's, where's brother so-and-so? Oh, my man. He's, boom, brother. Boom. He didn't make it. He boomed in the hell. I got to put this body, my attitude, my, 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 my flesh into subjection so that as I preach to other folks, I don't go to hell. And fasting puts my body in subjection. Fasting and praying, by the way. Because let me tell you something, let me tell you something, let me tell you something, something dangerous about fasting. You don't fast in isolation. You don't fast to get your own revelation all somewhere by yourself. That's how demons come to you when you fast, and that's why we need to be together. Hello. Easiest example, Jesus fasted. When he was hungry, the devil didn't come until he was hungry. When he was hungry, Satan came with temptation. Jesus gave him the word. But the same didn't happen for Charles Taze Russell. Charles Taze Russell was a Christian, went on a fast, and came out with revelation for the Jehovah's Witness. Same thing didn't happen for Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith was a Christian, went on a long fast, came out with tablets from an angel called Moron. I didn't make that up. He said an angel named Moron gave him the tablets. He started the Mormon church on a fast. That uh, uh, Aeneas Lachanyani that started the Zion Christian Church, probably one of the biggest Christian cults of all time in South Africa, was angry, got hurt in the church from the Zion Church from Zion, Illinois. He felt that they were racist. He went on a fast and came out, said he was their God, and had a big church that just this past Sunday, they had to have about 2 million people at their service on Sunday. The banks in their town shut down on Monday for them to put their offering in the bank. He dead now, but his son in charge. You go on the fast and you come out of Revelation. First of all, God can't give you Revelation that ain't in his Bible. And God ain't take you so deep that you can't be around us. Now, you know, the Lord just led me to just go under a rock and just do my thing. No, no, you've been saved 15 minutes, first of all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Put my body under subjection. We come together. We strengthen one another. The revelation got to come from the word. And then how do I know that what God has given me is true? Because I have people that know the word that can not tell me their opinion and share with me. We share with each other. Hallelujah. Woo! Uh, fasting also increases your capacity for anointing. You want to increase capacity. Because you have to have, we have to have, increased capacity to carry what God gives us. Some of us 
are this. Some of us are this. And some of us are five-gallon buckets. And some of us are 50-gallon barrels. It all comes through consecration and fasting. How much are you willing to give to God? But if, if, if what you say all the time is I, I, me, my, I feel, I feel, and you're always talking about how you feel, it's because you go by feelings because your God is your that's how I feel. I, I just feel. I just feel. I just feel like, no, see, this is how I was raised. This is how I came up. This is how I know. This is how I know because I've been around. And you know I was down there with Pastor Tutu, too. See, that's how I feel. That's how I feel. No, you, you too full of feelings. I've been there, too. I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about me. So it was how I feel. It's my opinion. This is how I feel. I just feel like that ain't fair. You know, I'm doing this and I'm doing all this and don't nobody see. Don't matter. I told you I was working 15 hours a day, six, seven days a week because I had my own business. And you know if you have your own business, <laughs> you, <laughs> you a slave. <laughs> it is easy to work for somebody. You just show them and go home. They take care of the rest. I had my own business. <laughs> had my own business working on the street with the law. <laughs> been good to me. <laughs> okay. I was working. And why, why did I bring that up? Talk about money. Capacity. Well, let's go to capacity. Let's stay focused because I got just a few more minutes. John chapter 3, verse 34. Are y'all with me? Y'all writing down these scriptures, marking them? Meditate on when you get home. Most of these scriptures are from your booklet, by the way. Last year I taught straight out of this booklet. Now I'm just moving as the Lord will lead. John 3, 34. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not his spirit. God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. There's a measure. Look at Ephesians 4, 13. Ephesians, Ephesu, Ephesu 4.13, but speaking the truth in love, may, oh, I'm at 15, till, all, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. It's a measure. The stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, if you're married, if you're not married, you ain't, you are not engaging in uh, sexual intimacy anyway. Say amen if you're not married. Amen. All right, thank you. Amen. I just needed some affirmation. <laughs> and if you are married, you should be engaging, but not when you fast. Yeah. That's the word. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse five. We're denying the flesh. Let's let's go up a little bit and do a little marital teaching. Let's go up to verse two. Let's go to verse one. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. It's better that you're not married. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband to avoid fornication. Let the husband, now this is important, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. Let me clear that for what that is. Do benevolence. This ain't the benevolent offering where you help the poor. Let the husband sleep with his wife when she wants to. And likewise also the wife unto her husband. The wife hath not power of her own body. Whoops! 
There goes that, my body, my choice. Wife hath not power over her own body, but the husband. And likewise also, the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. When a wife wants you, you got to give yourself to her. I don't want to. So what? Somebody married, say amen. amen. There's some wives and my husband be saying he got a headache. Brother, suck it up. She wake you up at three, you tired. Say, Lord, give me strength. <laughs> and wife, your husband wants you. See, I started with the husband and the wife. Wife, your husband wants you. I'm tired of you. That's all you want. You're the only one he can want. Be glad that he wants you. He wants you. And I done found headaches go away when tensions ease. It's preaching. <laughs> Number five. We in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Verse 1 to 4. Verse 5, defraud ye not one the other. Don't cheat each other. That means you got to give yourself. Except, now I had to do all that teaching to get to this to make it make sense. Except it be with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. And then you come together again. That Satan tempt you not for your incontency. Now, you can't say, hey, baby, let, let, I, want, I love you. I, I'm fasting. Y'all need to talk about that. Set the time. <laughs> this might be breaking. <laughs> Set that, okay. I'm looking at the calendar now. I'm telling my wife. This one I think I'm going in. What you think about that? And I'd prefer we do it together. Because I'd hate to be fast in the first 20 days and you fast the last 20. And then the last, the whole 40, 50 days, let's do this together. Because we're all in this thing together. <laughs> Are y'all with me? You don't have to like it, but it's the Bible. Yeah, I think, I mean, sometimes we get called to immediate, like some of you just might be like, oh, Lord, I just got to go fast right now. I haven't been fast and I just need to go fast. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And, and that's something that's not always. And you can talk to your spouse. You know what? The Lord just called me on a fast. We're going to fast. But that shouldn't be happening like every month. That's, I'm just, whoa. Now, I have been reminded that today is Tuesday. It's a fast day. I've been reminded of that once or twice. You know, it's a fast day this morning. I said, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> it's funny how, you know, the saints remember what day it is. I don't know what day it is. But we, we with consent with one another, we talk about it. We know we're on consecration. Let's plan this out. Consecration, we're consecrating. We're, we're doing these things, but then let's talk this out. I just want to put that on because I don't want nobody. And if your spouse is not married. If your spouse is not married, you don't leave somebody because they, I mean, I mean, if your spouse is not married, that's just crazy. <laughs> that's, just, that's just crazy. Yeah, that's just, if your spouse is not married, then you're not married. If your spouse is not saved, now there's something finagle in there. You got to be in wisdom. You understand what I'm saying? You don't leave somebody because they're not saved. The Bible says their spouse is sanctified through you. If they're willing to stay with you, you stay with them. Don't be that woman in uh, If Bill Street Could Talk, James Baldwin book, Bible. And she, I can't touch you, you a sinner. That's James Baldwin's take. I don't know if that really happened, but anyway. And then if that's the case, then God will give you wisdom on how to deal with that. And you can talk to your spouse and they don't agree, then God will give you grace. Are you all with me? Talk to your spouse. Listen, I'm trying to be a better, trying to be a better wife. Just give me a couple of days uh, right here with you. I ain't going nowhere. There's nobody. You're the only one. 
but let me get some time. Now, let's, let's, let's just talk about this for the last five minutes. I want to talk about the how on fasting. Can I do that? I think I've, I've shared on the what and the why and the, yeah, the what and the why and what happens. Let's look at the, let's look at this. How will we consecrate? It's very important that we limit our streaming internet, uh, except for obviously on your job, you got to use the internet. Uh, and and if, we, if you just got to watch something, we're watching Christian movies. As a matter of fact, my wife is a fundi. Oh, that's a Swahili word. My wife is an expert at finding Christian movies. She's an expert at it. She finds movies. I don't know where she finds these movies from, but it'd be something on the TV. I said, what's this? It's a Christian movie. It'd be good. Some of them be real good, good Christian movies. But then I still shouldn't be sitting watching Christian movies all day. Amen. That can't replace my time with God. You know, one thing that's hard for people is quiet. You ever just ride in your car without the radio on, without the podcast on? Hard thing to do for some people. I need some noise to get some quiet time with God to hear from God. Cut the streaming off. Cut the internet off. Even all these preachers. You don't need to hear everybody preach right now. We even limit our time watching the news. Because we already know that the news is targeted towards uh, oppressing and it's fixed. Even NPR. Somebody said, not NPR. They're so educated. No, they worse. Because they talk nice. We stand off social media for the next 50 days. We should have limited social media exposure anyway. Social media warps your brain, literally. We avoid all forms of social media. No matter which one it is, except for if you drop in something on there to encourage people, God, that type of thing. Like I do a thing on Mondays every night, so I'll probably continue to do it. I didn't do it this Monday. We were here in prayer and I went home. Plus, my computer is sick. Uh, we stay off socially talking on the telephone. Some of y'all, some of y'all marriage is about to be jacked up because you keep talking to your family members two, three hours every evening. Talking to your mama. Talking to your daddy. <laughs> your husband been at work all day. Now you on the phone talking to your sisters and brothers on a conference call. Kids don't even know you. They just, they just know you talking on the phone, listening to all y'all gossip. Then you wonder where they got messy from. We, we, we limit ourselves from excessive texting during this time. Are you all with me? We spend our previous time on television, movies, social media, reading. Uh, it's a time to cleanse our souls. Time of consecration while still engaged in all the noise. We're trying to break free from the noise in society. If we're still engaged with all the noise in society, it's counterproductive to consecration. Fellowship and discipleship is key during this time of consecration. Isolation will have a reverse effect. I talked about that because that's when the enemy attacks stragglers. You stick with the herd. We must spend time together, worship together, encourage one another, inspire one another, and be a part of what's happening, what's coming up. Now, let me give you a few tips on fasting. I have on here on page six. It's on page six in the consecration guide. If you don't have one, it's okay. You look at it later. You probably already looked at it, but I want to give you some more direct in instructions, and I'll be done. If you're fasting for three days, when I talk about fasting, I told you what fasting is. Everything else is consecration. If you cannot fast, uh, uh, absolute fast, meaning water only, you will, um, let's say you're um, on heavy medication or something like that, you can go to water and vegetables. Leave the meat alone. Doctor didn't say you had to have meat. So if you're going to uh, fast three days, you're drinking only water. No, this is not correct. This doesn't look right. It says drink water only for three days prior. That's not true. Uh, th th the next sentence is right. That's a mistake there. I think I, I shouldn't put the three days prior. Drinking water three days is the fast. Eat no meat three days prior. Start going down, start eat, just eating vegetables, eating things that grew out the ground for the first the three days before because you got to clear your body. Most meat stays in your body seven days to 14 days. It just sits in you. 
So you got to flush your body of all that so it don't sit and decay in your body. And when you're not eating, nothing's moving. So you need to flush your body. You need to drink at least 64 ounces of water daily uh, as you're going into the fast. Begin the fast and drink water only for three days. That's right there. When breaking the fast, uh, a three-day fast, you can't eat a whole lot. Eat just, uh, drink just a little juice, eat live food. Uh, live food, maybe a little bit of cucumber, a little bit of tomato. Uh, the next day you can eat a small portion. You shouldn't be eating heavy stuff because your body has to wake back up. But three days is not so bad. If you're going on a, uh, I don't know how I did this. This is crazy. This is a mistake here. You got to fix that. Uh, if you fast in five to ten days, you shouldn't eat meat five to Three, five to ten days prior. As many days as it takes to do the fast, you should be preparing to fast. Now, there's some quick ways to make your body flush itself. I don't know if I want to talk about that now because I don't want everybody doing bad habits. There are ways to flush your body. Um, yeah. Eat no meat three to five days. Forget that drink water only part. I don't know how I put that in there. Drink at least 64 ounces of water daily. Begin the fast, drink water only for five to ten days. When breaking the fast, only a little bit of clear broth on the first day, just a little bit, and you actually feel it go into your body. And here's the thing, if you eat food, the longer you abstain from eating food, the better your body wakes up. You know how when you wake up in the morning and you haven't eaten and you eat something heavy, you can feel it in your stomach? Does that happen to any of you? So just imagine if you haven't eaten for ten days, right? So if you just do like I did, I first got married, and I, my first 21-day fast, I went on a 21-day fast. I was so frustrated. I was just frustrated married. We were clashing in all kinds of ways, and our socioeconomic condition was abysmal at best, and I was trying to be the man, right? And my wife, it wasn't her fault. It was just me trying to be the man. And then the Lord told me to go on the fast. I went on a 21-day fast. Why on that 21-day fast, all I could think of was peanuts. That's all I could think of. I just wanted peanuts so bad. Just peanuts, peanuts. So I'm looking at the 21st day. This is my first time ever fast. And, and I was taught just like you. 21st day, uh, I was going to break that fast on the 21st day at 3 o'clock. I pulled up at the store, a uh, little hood store. Went in the hood store, got me a big bag of salted peanuts, sat in the car. It's a quarter to three. I prayed from a quarter to three to three o'clock. As soon as it hit three, I was praying. I'm sorry. I was looking at the clock. Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help me, Lord. Thank you for helping me get through these 21 days. Amen. I took a handful of salted peanuts, popped them in my mouth, chewed them up. My whole mouth felt like it was bleeding. My whole body felt like it was going to just explode. It was the most foolish thing I had ever done. And, and I had also robbed myself of the wonderful, glorious things that my body had experienced during the fast. Because I just dumped all this salt and oil and nuts. I was on Mount Elliot at the store, by the way. Uh, I, I, I had that handful. Of, oh, oh, those just, I, I'm sure if anybody was looking, they just thought I was like a, a crackhead or something. The way I was looking with those peanuts. But I rob my body because the longer you go, the more your body, you don't want to hurt your body, destroy your body. I felt it all in my esophagus, all in my stomach, and it sat there for days. It didn't move because my stomach, my whole digestive system had went to sleep. So I just dumped that stuff there, and it's just sitting there, and I could feel it. And now I'm feeling miserable after I was feeling good after the fast, and I wasn't happy with them peanuts, and my mouth was hurting for days. So you take, it's going to take as many days. Come off the fast as it did to start the fast and your body, because whatever you eat when you come off the fast, your body's going to absorb it immediately. So if you wanted ho-hos and you eat a ho-ho, all of that, all of that, that, that fat, whatever, is just going to go in your body. It's going to be even worse because it's going to go in there. But if you stretch it out the way it's supposed to, you get the spiritual benefits and the physical benefits. Are you all with me? But you take care of your body also, and you don't abuse your body. So it takes time. It takes five to ten days to become back. It, it's not until the, you should be eating raw food all the way up to day six. Even when you feel like you can eat a lot, to eat raw food. That's why I say it's harder to break a fast than it is.
start a fast. If you do the same thing for 10 to 20 days, eat no meat 10 days prior, you should be on what people call a Daniel fast 10 days prior, drinking nothing but water. See, really, that's drink a lot of water for seven days prior. Oh, oh, I know what I mean here. Oh, I know what it means here. I know what it means here. This is not wrong. When it says water only, don't drink nothing else. Juice, soda, that's what that means here. Okay, I get it. It doesn't contradict itself. But I'm like, how did I do that? So you shouldn't be drinking nothing else. It's preparing your body to shut down. Are you all with me now? At least 64 ounces of water a day. Begin fast and drink water only for 10 to 21 days. When breaking the fast, drink only a, a, a bit of broth. And it might be vegetable broth. You might just boil a little bit of onion. And just an onion soup, if you will. And you're going to find, here's what you're going to find. When you fast it, you got one of them, what do you call it when you get your stomach cut in half or whatever? What do you call that? Huh? Sleeve, a what? Dissect, whatever you get. You didn't know to cut the stomach and you eat less. Your stomach will have shrank when you fast. You will find, even if you fasted three days, you won't be able to eat as much as you used to eat. You fast more than three days, ten days or so, you get a plate like you used to get. You know them plates that you used to get where you couldn't see the plate and you couldn't see the people on the other side of the table. You won't be able to eat that because your stomach will have shrunk and you'll be full much faster. Now, obviously, you can stretch your stomach back quickly, but it, it takes uh, self-control with your body. Then if you go up to 40 days, if you've never done a 21-day, I don't advise that you try to do a 40-day. This is not a competition. We don't fast for strife. We don't have to walk around the church. You don't have to know how many days somebody fasted unless you, they want to fast with you. There's some who you'll come together with and say, hey, let's fast together. Let's come together and fast. So let's prepare. I'm preparing my body now for an extended fast. Are y'all with me? And as I prepare my body for extended fast, I'm hungry. Because I just, what I'm going to miss. And as soon as I start fasting, it's something I'm going to remember that I didn't get to eat. And then it's going to be like the end of my life because I wish I could have that. And everybody's going to want me to come eat and come this and come that and come this. I'm, I, I got something for you. Let's go eat, Doc. Let's go eat it. Wherever you say, I'm good. Anybody got any questions? My time is way up. This is my sister. Oh, do you get over the headache? Remedy for headache? Yeah. Water, uh, maybe put a little bit of lemon. Well, that's for nausea. If you get nauseous, put a little bit of water. Just lemon. No, no, not making lemonade, y'all. All right. Now, don't put no sugar in there. All right. Uh, but just a little bit. But, but here's the thing. The head sometimes is a sign of toxins in our body that got to come out. It's a process. And it's according to how long you're going to fast that it'll, come, it'll work its way out. Most of the time, the reason why you got to clear out your body, for some people it don't, but for many people their digestive system shut down and you won't eliminate until after you start back eating. And then it'll take days for you to begin to eliminate again. So for headache, I, anybody else got anything for headache? Water, lemon water. Huh? It's water. She said mint water. Mint. And, and she didn't say mints. Mint water. Uh, I think you had a hand up first. Oh, I answered. Okay. Mm -hmm. I discovered because I'm on hypertension medicine. I discovered on an extended fast, I started getting really a, a bad headache and getting kind of dizzy. But that's because I was taking my I did take because I took my blood pressure medicine because I was supposed to take it on a regular, but I was tanking my blood pressure. So because my body was regulating and doing better, I didn't need to take my blood pressure medicine every day. So I would skip. I had to skip like two or three days because I literally was tanking. And because I have to take my pressure, they sent it to my doctors. They called, they sent me and they called me and said, what's wrong with you? Because my blood pressure was so low. And I had to realize, oh, okay, so the Lord told me, start taking. And this happened to me last year during the consecration. Taking blood pressure medicine every couple of days. 
I started doing it since that time. I don't, I don't have to take my, since the consecration, I don't have to take my blood pressure medicine. I don't take it every day, and my blood pressure is, is regular. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. So what, what I hear you saying is since last year consecration, your blood pressure is better and regulating better. Hallelujah. That's what, I, that's what I heard. So her medicine was toxic because she didn't need it no more. Did you have your hand up? Um, well, it's the fast sounds like I had sleeve, gastric sleeve surgery. And so the fast sounds like the diet after, um, you had surgery and what she said, um, when I, after surgery, I wasn't able to eat a lot. So my pressure was dropping, dropping. I almost kind of left here and I didn't know it until uh, <laughs> I had to go to the doctor, had to draw some blood. Um, but the thing was with the meat. When I was doing that, I had to make sure I take my vitamins. So that is a question. Do you consistent? Do you take the vitamins when you're doing the extended fast? Uh, uh, I, I think you said you were eating and you are eating much less than you used to eat and you had to take vitamins. Right. Right. I think that when we start back fasting, I mean, start back eating from fasting, I don't think we take um, what am I, vitamins while we're fasting. Um, but I think that when we come back from fasting, we got to be very diligent about what we eat. We should be, you know, get a multivitamin or whatever we're going to do. I think that is very important because if you because what he said was that he was on a what is what we call a Daniel fast he wasn't eating meat so then he was replacing missing some things in some ways and so he had to balance that out this sister right here is a super nutritionist um, she's, she's the best legit in the world um, uh, missionary Monica Gary can help you on how you come back from a fast and how you how you how you have the extended benefits because if you come back through a fast should be how we begin to eat later. Even if you're not a vegetarian, the amount of meat you should eat should be about this much. Yep. Wait, wait. That should that your plate should be led with vegetables. We eat about this much meat. So I think it uh, fasting helps discipline us in the way that we should be. But I, I will encourage you. I want to encourage you. Couple of quick questions. Should I drink coffee? No. I think I answered that earlier. Um, do I got to be off of work and, and take a vacation to fast? You can go to work and fast. But I work a physical job. You can work a physical job and fast. Um, I, I built the whole church physically while on a fast, mixing the concrete by hand uh, with a shovel, wheelbarrow, and lay the whole floor. We were fast. Uh, can I uh, do, uh, what about cooking for my children? What do I do? Because uh, I got to taste it. Let them taste it. Right? You don't have to taste it. And, and you really sing God. I, we cook all the time. Our children are more happy when we're fasting because we cook stuff that we imagine. And like, I know y'all going to like this. I even make up dishes. And they be like, ooh, y'all fasting. This food is good. Yep. <laughs> and when you're really in a long fast, you can even smell what, this smell like it need more salt. Ah, it need a little oregano. Ah, a little cumin. All right, somebody's hands. Uh, it was somebody over here too. Okay, coming to you, Reverend. Is it a such thing as I'm dealing with the spiritual side? What came out of it? You know, when Moses came after the mountain, he was all up, he was light up or whatever. How did you manage that? That you don't seem so spiritual, but what the Lord put in you has been in height. Now over Zoom, you over you ain't got close. You in. How do you deal with that side of it? Go ahead and be spiritual. <laughs> but, yeah, one thing that will happen, though, is it's easy to be, to get to a place of condemnation of others. Look at them. They ain't fasting. I've been fasting. Or, or why are you fasting? Anybody eating this carnal? Has that ever happened to you? Like, you fasting. You on day 14. He'd be like, what's wrong with you carnal people eating? Like, you forgot you was eating 15 days ago. <laughs> we all got to eat. So you got to balance to say, hey, you know, this is this. I remember I was out of town. I'm going to mess with you, Sharon. I was out of town and out of the country for a while. And I was calling 
Sharon, and she was here. She, well, uh, uh we were living in South Africa at the time. No, you, we were back here. So I was in South Africa, huh? Yeah, we were, and then I had to go back while she was here. She was visiting family, and every time I called her, she was eating, and she was just eating. I was like, "What you doing eating? You know I'm fasting." And she's like, "That's you fasting." Well, why are you eating? <laughs> her cousin was cooking her everything, every American dish you could imagine. And I call and she's like, ooh, this is good. We eating. I'm, I'm, I'm. You can't be eating. I'm here freezing and hungry. So anyway, so I'm with you. And, and hold on to the spiritual benefits. Just like Moses was glowing, that is a, uh, God has elevated you. Don't go back. What got you there is that I limited all this noise from the world. I de went deep into the word, and I'm closer to God and long to go even deeper into God. And, um, and I, I wasn't joking. I mean, some people might say, you don't got too deep, and then it is what it is. I praise the Lord. I still love you, and I can still love and joke and enjoy you, but God is good. All right, people of God. Well, somebody over here with something. Somebody. All right. Yes, mother. I'm coming. When he said, putting forth of the finger. Is this what you were saying about uh, criticizing others? Right there, it said, it says, and don't, uh, but the yoke and put, from this to these, the yoke and the putting forth of the finger is speaking yes. vanity. Yes. Yes. So the putting forth of the finger or just always blaming and fighting other folks, Lord, help me to, uh, some battles God is going to fight. Somebody's God going to show. The worst thing that can happen is that we as a church be like, we the only church fasting in all this area. Ain't nobody doing nothing. I wish other folks were saved. There's some other folks fasting and seeking God. I meet some folks. There's always somebody. I meet, I done met folks be on two, three, 40-day fast in a year. I know people like that. Old, young, all kind of folks. We ain't the only ones seeking God. There is a remnant that's seeking God. The odd thing is, uh, uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Yes, my sister, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. You can catch. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you have any suggestions for teenagers or maybe youth that want to fast for maybe like two days or, you know, however long? Use fast as well. Ka-chow. That's a good question. Okay, teenagers, or just anybody. If you're new to fasting, now I'm a, I'm a preface it like this: It's harder for me to fast till three o'clock on a Tuesday than to fast ten days for me. That's just me. Ten days is easier than fasting till three o'clock. I think because I can see them seconds and minutes rolling. I don't know. Start small. Start small. Now, noon is not a worthy goal because you probably don't eat breakfast anyway. So just start, say, I'm going to fast till 3 o'clock some of these days. And then as I fast, I'm, and, and then the other piece is that that's the food part. Then the other piece is I got to, I know people who just go ahead and remove the app. So the temptation is, you know, your favorite social media app that, that's talking to you and sending you notifications and you need to see this. Yeah, just remove it. You can put it right back on. It'll pick you up right where you left off. I would say to you teenagers, you got power, you got time, you can do it. Start small. And as you start a couple days till 3 o'clock, then you might go another day till 6. Then later on, maybe a week or so from now, you might say, you know what? Get a couple of y'all. Get, get with some seasoned folks. I'm going to go tomorrow. God going to bless you, and you're going to grow in that. And like I told you, I've had some that said, you know what, I've been fasting for it till 3. I've been fasting till 6. I'm going to do three days because I've seen you do it. Parents, and, and parents, I say to you, uh, you eat dinner together. You try to eat dinner together. You eat, eat, turn your plate over, just sit at the table and talk to them while they eat. And then they know, oh, y'all fasting. And so it sets an example. This is what we do. We fast. And then encourage your children, encourage each other. Get around some good Christian other folks that's trying to do the same thing and say, hey, let's, let's fast at least on Friday or Tuesday. And we're going to fast during this consecration and God going to bless you. Because it's not just the length. 
Don't nobody get caught up in a competition. How many days you go? I'm going more than you. No, because you got to grow into it. You get what I'm saying? You got to grow into it. I ain't recommend it. There was a guy in the church that, that uh, it was a guy in the church. Uh, I won't say his name right now. He might be watching. For knowing him, he is. And, and um, he came to me and said, the Lord told me to go on a 40-day fast. I'm going on a 40-day fast starting today. And I said, man, you can't do that. You got to prepare yourself. By the pastor, you don't have faith. God talked to me. He told me just like that. You don't have faith. I don't have faith. You don't have faith. The Lord told me going to fast. And we were doing children's ministry, and we had a, a partnership with a restaurant. They had these gourmet sandwiches. They were the best sandwiches ever. They were in subs. This is in South Africa. They had these sub sandwiches. They were delicious. And we would get whatever they didn't sell that day, they gave us to get to the children in the children's ministry. Woo, them some good sandwiches. So the same day. This man told me the Lord said he's going to go on the fast, da, 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 da. I told him earlier that morning, he now working with the children's ministry. We passing out sandwiches. Who in the corner? <laughs> Eating one of the sandwiches. I said, whoa, 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 man, whoa. He said, oh, no. Oh, these sandwiches good. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> he didn't make it the first day. <laughs> Have faith. So you start, start. If you did go to noon, go to noon. Then go to three. Then just ask God. Ask you something. You can, you can do more than what you know. God will give you strength. You do more than what you know. Just ask God. You, God, give me strength. I'm not doing this to prove a point. I'm doing this to come close to you. And Job said, I love you more than my daily bread. I don't remember the book, chapter, verse on that. I just remember the book. Remember the chapter verse. I'll get it for you. I love you more than my daily bread. Tell God that. I love you more than my daily bread. So I'm setting aside this bread, this toast. I'm setting aside these eggs. I'm setting aside this, these grits. I just want you. And then I'm pressing into you. This is what I want from you. And as you do it in secret, God going to reward you openly. And he'll give you strength over your belly. Amen, y'all. All right. I think we good. If we not, there's experts all over this room. And as we fast together, some of you get in groups, get with some people, say, hey, let's fast together. And um, let's fast together and hold one another up, strengthen one another every day. Get with some folks and just continue to pray, continue to follow this. I read through this all today. It blessed me. And I put it together. The part that I got from Franklin Hall books, it blessed me. It blessed and strengthened me. I can talk about fasting for like five more hours just out the Bible. There's more in the Bible about fasting than prayer, more in the Bible about fasting than even faith. So it is egregious that we don't talk enough about fasting. When's the last time you heard a teaching or a preaching about fasting? You don't hear it. Why is that? The devil has robbed us of our greatest power source. And that's all I'm saying is tap into the power source. May we stand? We got to go home. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But water is essential. Uh, I knew a preacher that said he, don't, he ain't going to drink no water. He, I ain't going to drink water. I'm going on a 20-day fast. No water, no food. He almost died. And he ain't saved to this day because he got spirit of deception that came upon him. <laughs> we don't need no long rangers. Water is essential. Drink water. Actually, you could go three days fasting without water. It's okay. But once you're going past there, you need water. Amen. Worked out fasting. I've been on 20 day fast, working out, doing push ups, sit up, doing all kind of stuff. Got to give you strength. Amen, somebody. When you go to school, your mind might be sharper. Yeah, mind is sharper. You're thinking better. Once you get past that hunger, once you get past, I meant to say this, once you get past about day three, your hunger goes. Three or four, you ain't hungry no more. Then you go, you are literally not hungry. Then you might make a little bit, the weakness goes. Sometimes you feel like you just, I'm going to pass out, I'm going to die. I'm going to pass out, I'm going to die. But then it goes. Now it can come back after about 10 days or so, then it'll go again if you persist. Amen, somebody. Amen. So we're going to fast. We're going to see God fasting and praying. And when God do that, the power shows. I'm going to go home and read Isaiah 58 one more again. Amen. For myself, one more again. 
Father, thank you for these men and women of God. Thank you for sharing your word. Thank you for those that were here. Thank you for those that had to go. Some people just had to go. But I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your word. I thank you for just strengthening us. I thank you that there's some hungry people in this church, hungry people that's online with us that say, I really want to press in to God. So give us the press in. Give us the push in. Give us the push. Father, let that, uh, Father, for many of us, take us, take us, rise up that man in the inside, that, 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 that hunger and thirsted after you. Give us not to be complacent. Give us not to rest on our laurels. In the name of Jesus, we bless you. We praise you. We give you glory. We rebuke Satan, every spirit of deception, every spirit of confusion. And we ask for your grace to be upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Endure hardness as good soldiers. Oh, we can give offering, y'all. God bless the offering. In Jesus' name, amen. You can drop that $1,000 right here, if you will. Amen. Here it is right there. Oh, hey, let me look at that now. People on, uh, people on, uh, on, um, on uh, Zoom, wait a minute. I'm coming to look at your questions. Don't go. Y'all here. Hey, I thought I saw you in here, Stephanie. Let me see. Where's the Zoom? Where's the Zoom? How do I? Oh, you don't know like I don't know. You don't know like I don't know. Somebody on? No, you can't do it. How can I see this? Hey, man. Help. Help. How do I see the Zoom questions? Help. Uh, which computer do I get to the chat? And are we still online here? Is it on? Look on. Uh, is this the internet? No. Here come the wife of the CIO. Hey, man. How you doing? Nope, it's not there. Is it on Facebook? Is it on this room? Oh, take it up there. Take it up there. On a, no, we looked over here. This is the anonymous, but the Zoom, how do I get to the? You guys just go on here and see the questions. Yeah. Jesse, you know how to get to it? Yeah. To the Zoom. You heard of hot on YouTube. Oh, it's not. Yeah, you heard of it. Switching on. Oh, yeah, you, you're trying to go. Yeah, it's still on. Yeah, can we log on and see? Okay. Yeah, that's, <laughs> thought of that. Okay, people on Zoom, we're going to answer your questions real quick. Uh-uh, I'm waiting on you. I'm just. You can't tell it. Let me tell it. I can't see it. Yes.